Today, in Draw My Life, The Portrait of Doreen Gray by Oscar Wilde. The story begins in London in the 19th century. In his studio, the well-known artist Basil Hallward is finishing the portrait of a young man with extraordinary beauty. He's speaking with Lord Henry Wotton, who thinks the painting is Basil's best work. He asks Basil to put it on display. Basil refuses and, when Lord Henry asks him why, the artist tells him that he met the subject of the painting Dorian Gray at a party. Basil admits that, since then, Dorian has become an object of fascination for him and his only source of inspiration. The conversation is interrupted by the artist Butler announcing the arrival of Dorian Gray. Intrigued by the boy, Lord Henry insists on meeting him. Basil accepts, but warns him not to spoil the young man's simple nature. While Basil finishes the portrait, Dorian and Lord Henry get to know each other better. Lord Henry praises Dorian's beauty and youth, but warns him that those qualities won't last forever and will disappear quickly. He suggests living his life to the fullest and looking for new sensations instead of staying with common hobbies. When Basil finishes the portrait, Dorian is not satisfied as he's worried that the portrait will remain young as he ages. Basil threatens to destroy it rather than letting it ruin his friendship. But Dorian stops him and tells him that he loves the painting. Basil promises to give it to him. Through his uncle Lord Fermer, Lord Henry discovers Dorian's past. Dorian's mother married a poor soldier whom his grandfather killed. His mother died shortly after, and Dorian was raised without love. After visiting his uncle, Lord Henry attends a dinner with his aunt and the London elite. There he surprises the guest by defending hedonistic ideas and saying that in life one must seek pleasure instead of looking for ways to relieve pain and tragedy. Dorian thus becomes fascinated with Lord Henry. A month later, Dorian informs Lord Henry that he is in love. The woman is Sybil Vane, a cheap theatre actress who plays the roles of Shakespeare's heroines. Dorian discovered her when exploring the city slums, inspired by the advice Lord Henry had given him to live his life to the fullest. But Dorian Sybil is the best actress he has ever seen, and Lord Henry decides to accompany him to see her act. That night after dinner, Lord Henry discovers a telegram from Dorian announcing his marriage to Sybil. Sybil Vane is completely happy with her romance with Dorian Gray, but her family are not so happy. Her mother is worried about Dorian's intentions and hopes Sybil will benefit from his wealth. Her brother James wants to make sure of her safety before he goes to Australia with the Navy. On a walk they take together, James tries to warn her about Dorian, but Sybil doesn't listen to him. Before saying goodbye, James promises that if Dorian ever hurts her, he will track him down and kill him. Lord Henry tells Basil of Dorian's plan to marry Sybil. Basil expresses his concern about Dorian's marrying a girl of very low social class. Lord Henry doesn't share this concern, as he is only interested in observing Dorian. Upon arrival, Dorian tells them the story of his engagement which took place after seeing Sybil play Rosalinda. He says his love for Sybil proves that what Lord Henry says about selfishness is false. But Lord Henry defends himself by affirming that it is not oneself who incites the pursuit of pleasure but nature itself. The three go to a theatre in the slums to see Sybil. To everyone's surprise that night, Sybil's performance is disastrous, and it breaks Dorian's heart. The two hike in the dressing rooms, and she assures him that her stage career is over. Dorian realises he was in love with her acting, and not with her. After rejecting her cruelly, he ends the relationship and returns home. At home, Dorian sees that Basil's portrait of him has changed. The other figure in the painting seems to smile, as if mocking him. Next morning, Lord Henry tells him that Sybil has committed suicide, and suggests he see her suicide as an artistic representation of eternal love. Dorian takes it as an important moment in his life and undertakes to lead a life of eternal youth and infinite pleasure. The portrait will be the one to bear the marks of old age instead of his own body. Next day, Basil visits Dorian to offer his condolences, but the young man doesn't care. Basil notices the change of attitude in Dorian and blames Lord Henry. Dorian asks Basil to make a portrait of Sybil, but refuses to go to Basil's studio to pose for him. Basil asks if he is unhappy with his portrait, and starts removing the cloth Dorian covered it with. But the young man gets angry and tells him that if he touches the cloth again, or lets the public see the painting, he will stop talking to him. Dorian decides to hide the portrait, he sends one of his servants in search of two men. He then asks his housekeeper to open the attic, which hasn't been used for a long time. Dorian asks the men to take the painting to the attic and lock the room where it will be safe from curious eyes and won't lose value. Over the years, and under the influence of a book Lord Henry gave him about a life dedicated to passion, Dorian's personality changes. But he remains young and attractive, his face maintains an impeccable appearance of purity and innocence, and he continues with his commitment to live life discovering the truth of the senses.
Dorian also continues to watch his portrait through time and fears that someone might steal it on the eve of his 38th birthday he meets Basil in the street. Basil warns him that there are horrible rumours about him and asks about some friendships that ended in disaster. Basil begins to doubt if he really knows Dorian and asks him to deny the accusations made against him. Dorian replies that to know the truth Basil must see his soul the portrait and takes him to where the painting is. Once in the attic, Dorian uncovers the portrait to show it to Basil, the latter is shocked by what he sees. The portrait is now horrible and shows Dorian with an evil smile and signs of ageing on his face. Basil asks how it is possible and Dorian reminds him of the desire for eternal youth he made that day in his study. Basil begs Dorian to repent but the young man tells him it's too late. Full of hatred against Basil, Dorian stabs the artist to death. And after making sure no one has heard him, he hides Basil's things and leaves the room. The next morning, Dorian sends for scientist and old friend Alan Campbell. Dorian confesses to having killed Basil Hallward that his body is in the attic and asks Mr. Campbell to destroy it. Mr. Campbell refuses to be involved in this matter, but then Dorian threatens to reveal a secret of his that will make his life miserable. While Mr. Campbell works to destroy the body, Dorian sees that one of the portrait's hands is now using a red liquid, like blood. Once Mr. Campbell has left, Dorian attends a dinner. At first, he feels bored until Lord Henry arrives. When it is time for dinner, Dorian cannot eat and decides to drink several glasses of champagne. Lord Henry realises that something has happened to his friend, but he doesn't know what it is. During the rest of the dinner, Dorian is distracted and irritable and even responds defensively when Lord Henry asks him where he was the previous night. Dorian leaves early. At home, he burns Basil's things, the only evidence that the artist had been there. He then looks for a jar of opium. After visiting the opium dens and on his way back home, someone grabs him by the back and pushes him against the wall. It is James Vane, who has been tracking down Dorian for years, trying to avenge his sister's death. Dorian hears the click of a revolver and denies being the man who was in love with Sybil 18 years ago because his appearance is of a 20-year-old man. James apologises and lets him go. A woman approaches and tells James that Dorian has been going to the dens for years, but his face has not aged at all. Furious, James promises to find Dorian again and kill him. The encounter with James causes Dorian to flee to his farm in the countryside with a group of guests that includes Lord Henry. One day, Lord Henry finds him fainted. When Dorian wakes up, he refuses to be alone and joins the group as if nothing had happened. But the fear of what caused his fainting haunts him. He thinks he has seen James looking at him from a window. A few days later, the group is in the garden shooting birds when Dorian decides to join them. Seeing that the next target is going to be a hare, he shouts at the guests, asking them not to shoot. He fails to stop them, and then everyone is surprised when not one but two screams are heard from the bush where they have fired shots. In addition to the hare, they have shot a man. That night, when Dorian goes out to see the corpse, he is relieved to discover the body of James Vane in the garden. At home, six months later, Dorian starts playing the piano and asks Lord Henry about Basil's disappearance. He asks him if he ever thought it was a murder, and what his reaction would be if Dorian confessed to being the murderer. Lord Henry tells him that criminal life does not suit him, he then mentions the portrait and Dorian replies that it was stolen or lost, but that he never gave it much importance. Dorian is left home alone and is curious to find out if there is another change in the portrait. When he removes the cloth, he discovers that the portrait is no more evil, the blood has spread over both hands and feet. He decides to destroy the painting, and with the knife he used on Basil, he destroys it. Minutes later, the police knock on the door. When no one opens, they decide to enter through the attic. Inside, they find an ugly old man lying in front of the painting, but the Dorian of the portrait has a young and beautiful appearance like the one he had the first day he was painted. Both its theme and its aesthetics have contributed to turning the portrait of Dorian Gray into a classic. There is also a certain mystery surrounding this work that makes it even more special, this is why we are going to tell you about some of its curiosities. First of all, you should know that the portrait of Dorian Gray is Oscar Wilde's only novel. He submitted it as a story to Lippincott's monthly magazine in 1889, and it was published on the 20th of June, 1890. This first publication caused a stir, as usually happened with Wilde's works. The first version was late for printing because Wilde was editing out all references to the fictional book The Secret of Raoul and its fictional author Catal Sarazen. This book, discarded by Wilde, formed the basis for The Portrait of Dorian Gray. Once the latter was published as a booklet, several publishers were encouraged to turn it into a novel. However, due to initial criticism, it was to undergo severe modifications, such as the incorporation of new chapters. 
They increased from 13 to 20 and the last chapter was divided into two new ones. Thus the character of Dorian was developed more deeply, making his attitude more understandable. To reduce the controversy surrounding the book, the character of Sailor James Fane was also included, providing the novel with a typically Victorian flair. This way, both the character of Sybil Vane and her background were more fully elaborated. In this new edition of 1891, Wilde added a preface to respond to criticism and defend his novel. In it, he talked about the role of the artist art and the value of beauty. Still, the criticism did not stop, much of it related to the way he depicted hedonism and conventional morals. He had to get into the minds of young people reading it. Therefore, despite all his efforts, his work did not stop bringing him trouble. And due to the description of the relationship between Grey and Basil, Wilde was tried for his homosexuality, then a crime for which he could go to jail. During the trials, he said that a man could not be judged for what he writes, unfortunately he was sentenced to forced labour. It is interesting to emphasise that this work is a modern reinterpretation of the Faust myth in which the protagonist sells his soul in exchange for eternal youth. It is said that Lord Henry could relate to the devil, although he is not aware of the consequences of his actions, however, he is guilty of manipulating Dorian's initial innocence and insecurity. Also, Oscar Wilde said that the book that corrupts Dorian Gray is against the grain, a novel by Joris Karl Hesmans. It is testament to the significance of this work that, in Western culture, a vain person who gives great importance to his appearance is called Dorian Gray. We hope this long summary has been of help. Tell us in the comments section what other classic work you would like us to summarize in 10 minutes. And subscribe. Until the next video.